Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Um, so, first off, thank you for coming out to the community forum on the Board of Education budget. I want to apologize to those um, here as well as in the, um, the viewing audience. This is being televised through WIN TV as well as the YouTube channel. And everything that we, that's done tonight will be up on the website, um, hopefully within um, by end of business tomorrow. Um, my name is Leonard Lockhart. I serve as the Board of Education. I have with me David Curie, Vice President of the Board of Education, and Finance Chair. Craig Cook, Superintendent. Thanks for coming. Daniel Batchelder, I'm the Director of Business Services for the District. All right, so um, we're going to take the time to go through the presentation. Um, for everyone, this, this meeting was originally scheduled for April 24th. Um, there was a lot of things scheduled for April 24th. Um, we had three of our state representatives that represent Windsor was planning a forum. On top of that, the town council was um, planning on approving the budget that particular day. But the Monday before that, they were supposed to have pub, um, public comments as well. They canceled public comments for that Monday and did public comments and approval on that Wednesday. So as board president, I didn't see that there should be two competing events uh, as um, you want to be at one or the other. So I made the decision to have um, Dr. Cook re reach out to our PTO presidents and to reschedule this event. So to the PTO presidents, thank you very much for be very, being very accommodating with that request. Um, as you know, for Windsor, we have a very, very, very good town that really supports all the services in town, both on the town and Board of Education side. Um, every decision that we make as Board of Education members, as well as the superintendent and all his staff is with the children in mind. Every single thing, every single dollar that's spent is with the children, um, student achievement at mind. Um, we want to make sure that we, we understand what our goals and the missions are within the district. We understand what, what we need to be focused on. And we got to make sure that the monies that we go right directly to those district priorities. Um, in addition, we want to make sure that we provide areas of support for teachers and all the staff within the buildings. So this has been a very collaborative process as it has been throughout the years. Um, if you go on our website, you can see the budget from the past six, seven years that has been approved by the citizens of the town of Windsor in regards to what we spent year over year. And then you can compare it year over year up to this point right now. So this budget is actually a budget that was uh, provided by the superintendent. It was approved by the board. And then it was also approved to go to the, to the citizens for referendum by the town council. 9-0 by the Board of Education, 9-0 by the Town Council. So now we're taking the time to go out and to really articulate to you exactly the high level priorities that's within this particular budget. Technology, right? <laughs> uh, as you can see, uh, there is an increase in this year's budget of 1,844,561, which represents 2.67% over last year's budget. Proposed budget figures there of 70,913,361. But the important part of that is that the fixed portion of the budget is 2.20, which means that doing the math, that is only an additional 0.47%. So we were very careful, and the superintendent was very careful in looking at the different needs that we had to balance off needs with programs that maybe we could take money from. So it wasn't only just more spending. It was trying to get what we consider, what the central office and the board consider the best bang for its buck. In addition to money that we get from the citizens in Windsor, we also get a number of outside grants. Uh, the three largest revenue sources of those are listed here. We have an educational cost sharing grant of over 11 million, special ed excess cost and tuition of a million five, and we are still an alliance district and we get a grant. That, the bad thing is we're still an alliance district. The good thing is we're getting money from, from the state for that $582,729. There's a number of other grants that people want to go and look to the minutia. There's a uh, in our budget book, there's a whole listing of other uh, grants that we get. And Mr. Lockhart just mentioned previously about looking at past years. And if 
you look at the last five year, the last five year average of an increase uh, for the budget has been 1.73%. So we've been very uh, respectful of, of town citizens in what we've been asking for. Thank you, David, and thank you for coming out on the only day that hasn't rained in the last uh, <laughs> three weeks. And so, um, as as David and Leonard pointed out, you know, we have been very fiscally conservative in the last five years, and even before that, the the zero there really really stands out. And I mention that again just because um, one of the areas we wanted to show, and I know it's not new for our families. You're probably um, very aware of this, but our enrollment is going up. So we're one of the few districts in Connecticut that's seen an increase in student enrollment. And in fact, as we sit here today, we had over 3,300 students attend Windsor Public Schools today. Um, we use October 1 because that's the official count through the state of Connecticut. But that is um, you know, something to, to be very aware of as we look at our, our costs you know, when we compare ourselves to other, other districts. We are seeing a, a, a pretty steady increase in terms of enrollment. I would say for the most part, it's been, been very manageable, um, other than Pequannock Kinder. So, um, you know, we have, as we have new students come in, they, they, they seem to have come in across the district. You know, they join us in ninth grade, 11th grade, 7th grade. But for whatever reason, over the summer, we had um, about 30 to 35 more students in, in Pequannock Kindergarten than we, we expected, which um, Ms. Peterson and I probably talked daily over the over the summer, it's a good. It was a good problem to have. It was really, really great. And through the support of the Board of Education, we added two kindergarten teachers because one of the things that um, has been very consistent with the Board of Education over the years, um, as as I've told them about concerns or, or, or a need for additional teachers, they've supported those. And so I was able to show there other areas we saved some money, and they gave me the okay to add those kindergarten teachers because we. We look for um, maintaining a, a really good class size across the district, and I think that's something that uh, Windsor has consistently shown is that class size for us is very important. It gives teachers much more contact with families, with students, you know, and able to um, really individualize instruction with, with students. Where are students coming from? So we've had many students return from magnet schools, private schools, uh, new families moving into town. Ms. Peterson and Ms. Hurl have shared with me as they were registering students in the in the um, kindergarten through two, they would see their families, young, young families coming in with, with babies and, and uh, toddlers. And so that enrollment will probably look to continue at those uh, early grades. Just some uh, um, data to share. And so this is always a different cohort. So we always want to make sure we, we speak to that. These are juniors that take the SAT for us at Windsor High School. And um, as you see, since the um, since the, the state coming out and saying the SAT test is the measure for, for high school, we've had a nice jump. That happened in 2016. So in 2015, we had about 85% of our students take the SAT test. And then in 2016, we had 96% take the SAT test. So even with more students taking it, we've seen a nice increase. The board has supported additional SAT preparation for students. So students have the opportunity to take an SAT preparation class during the day or stay for afternoon and Saturday sessions. And our teachers have been trained to bring them through a process. So it's it's really been um, a great measure for us in the past. I think our students were very savvy and they understood that the statewide assessment was more so for a measure of the school, not necessarily themselves. They themselves had the SAT test. They had advanced placements tests they had to take. Um, the driver's test, they had lots of things that I think were more important to them at that point than uh, um, the CAPT, which was the old old test. But SAT has been, been very good. I mentioned advanced placement. So we have open enrollment advanced placement. So any student that wants to take a advanced placement test through conversations with their school counselor, teachers, and their families are, are able to, to get into an advanced placement course. And so um, other districts might have some, some barriers to that. I want to make sure I haven't jumped on anyone's slide yet. Good. Um, other schools, districts might have barriers to taking the advanced placement test, but we um, we do not have that in place. So you see a, a large number of, of tests taken at the um, at the high school, and really a growing number of students taking tests. You know, our, our belief is that um, every student that wants to and 
um, you know, was interested in taking an advanced placement test or, or excuse me, a, a course at Windsor High School during their time there should be able to take that. So we're, we're pushing them um, into that. It's very good to see them have that college level experience. You know, it's truly a college level course and gets to have them see the rigor of that exam. SBAC, again, different different cohorts going through. Um, we had two years of uh, some some good growth over the over the course of time. Last year, we did see a, a, a step back in that. It's you know a different test, different cohorts of students taking the taking the test. But I think you know over time we've seen a, a, a steady growth in our our SBAC um, results and assessment um, preparation and, and work we do in the in the classroom. We're constantly aligning curriculum. So each summer. You know, we have curriculum teams in math and, and reading um, in other areas across the district, writing new curriculum, revising new curriculum to, uh, to make sure we're, we're aligned to what the state is um, assessing us on. And another um, area that um, we're proud to share is graduation rate. And so this is looking at the, of the class that comes in as freshmen at Windsor High School. How many are graduating within four years? And so we're graduating 92.3 percent in uh, in those four years from the 2017-2018 class. Um, they also measure six-year graduation rate, and that is typically around 98 percent for, for Windsor High School. So if a, um, a student leaves us and they go to another high school in Connecticut or another high school you know, across the across the nation, then um, that would not count against our rate. But if a student leaves us and does not enter into another um, school district right away, then that could count against our, our, our rate based on the, on the state measure. But we work very hard to, to work with our students. A big piece of this is we have block scheduling, which allows our students to take um, up to eight classes at any time at the, at the high school. You know, oftentimes we'll encourage students to have a study hall in there, but they can take up to eight classes. And we have 25 credits as our graduation requirement. You may have heard the state is doing a lot of work on a graduation requirement throughout um, Connecticut coming out with a new mandate. We already meet that requirement in terms of number of credits. We're going to have to look at how those credits are, are made up and uh, potentially offer some more things like world lang additional world languages and, uh, to meet that requirement. But we, we already have the number of maximum credits, and we're, we're um, in good position to meet that new mandate. Next slide, I'm going to turn it back over to David. Dr. Cook gets to talk about all the good news and what do I get budget channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take one step back, I'm the finance chair. A number of years ago, the Board of Education it used to be a separate committee. And what it turned out to be most of the time is most members of the board came anyway to those meetings. And so instead of having committee then bring it to the board as a whole, we really, a few years ago before I was on the board, created a, a committee of the whole. So every nine members on the Board of Education is on the Finance Committee. And uh, one of the challenges here has to do with our contractual obligations, things that we uh, are locked into, and this has to do with our six bargaining units, biggest being the teachers union and their contract. And so. There's nothing we can do about those things. Those are negotiated in good faith between management and, and the teachers, and, but it is it is a challenge. Uh, there is a note there that there's $300,000 built into estimated retirement. So that's often, doesn't happen all the time, many times so a senior teacher may be making a lot of money who retires and are able to hire someone um, at a starting salary if they're new or usually a smaller amount left. Obviously, it being a major need for a certain particular area, that doesn't happen there. But this, again, that's only an estimate. So we talked about other challenges. So um, the biggest expense in um, our budget, obviously, are salaries and benefits. It's, all, it's the people. Um, we have um, staff, but the next three areas that are going to be up high on the list of big ticket items is going to be our special ed class, our transportation, and our special ed transportation. 
Um, our regular ed transportation increases go, coming into uh, 1920 is about $183,000. That represents a 3.9% increase. Some might say, wow, that's a lot, but that percent was a negotiated um, contract that was spread out over five years. So we did, instead of having 2222 two, two, two for five years, we did um, a some increases are higher and some are lower depending on um, what we knew was going to happen in years to come with state budgets or um, teacher contracts coming um, uh, for renewal time so we try to um, mitigate some costs that way so to have a level playing field going into the next school year um, regular ed transportation also we have 72 type 1 buses those are the big yellow buses you see we have 36 type 2 buses those are the more of the compact ones that you see uh, along with uh, many vans and um, wheelchair vans so that makes up um, a big portion of our budget the next one is special ed transportation this one is an increase of 85,000 and this is solely based on student need and um, the needs of each student and if they need monitors on a bus if they need a wheelchair if they need any type of um, special accommodation on and off that um, transportation um, each day and the last one is our special ed out of district this increase is a little less than 50,000 it's that increase is actually on the low side which is nice because of the work that we do in district keeping kids in-house as much as um, possible um, seven eight years ago you would have seen an increase of probably over two three hundred thousand so that really is a tribute to all of the work that our administrators and teachers do to keep our kids in Windsor Public Schools so working together with the town um, town of Windsor and Windsor Board of Ed are constantly in communication um, with our budgets an increase um, of 155,000 is for employee retirement match. As of July 1st, 2013, the town, in an effort to mitigate costs on their end, switched the pension plan for non-certified employees from the town's budget to the Board of Ed. So anyone that was hired after 7-1-2013, any non-certified, that's your parents, custodians, clerical unions, um, are paying into a 401a pension plan that the Board of Ed contributes 5% of the earnings into. All employees that were hired before 7-1-2013, that expense is on the town of Windsor's budget. The next one is an increase in tuition. So this is a good um, area that we are able to give the town of Windsor back money for revenue. So if we take on a student from a different um, town, if we have a DCF placement and that student is placed in Windsor, however their nexus is from a different district, we are able to charge tuition costs. So um, that $200,000 goes directly to the town to help offset our uh, the whole town and Board of Ed budget. Benefits, this is a huge savings for us that we did not have to increase. That was startling. <laughs> increase um, expense in this line item. Um, this could range from a $500,000 savings to close to a million. Um, I talked to counterparts in other districts and they're looking at 10, 12, 15% increases. And that's on top of a $10 million expense so um, it's very good that we don't have an increase we didn't have one last year as well um, and it's mainly due because all of our employees are now on a high deductible health savings plan as of July 1 2018 and also we've got and I always knock on wood when I say this great claims uh, our employees we do um, health um, promote health and wellness within the district and it really shows on our premiums because our claims are so low which is a great um, benefit to have and lastly this savings from utilities we did a phone upgrade district-wide um, all of the phone system is now on um, 
online through our um, internet so that was a savings in electricity and also we did an LED lighting upgrade to all four elementary schools and Windsor High School. Sage unfortunately is getting piecemeal but um, we're hoping by the end of Leanne is not happy about that. Um, hopefully by the you know next um, seven eight months we can do little by little in each room and have um, district wide um, LED upgrade, which is a huge savings for us um, in our lighting and electricity bills. Thank you, Danielle. So, what's in the budget? The beyond you saw some of the challenges, you saw some of the things we're we're adding kind of more structurally. But um, just to to share with you, we want to. Well, it takes some time to, to really what we're adding to the to budget to strengthen our, our school district. When we met with the administrators at the start of the budget process, my message to them was, if you're looking to add something, we probably need to look at it at the same time as if we're able to decrease something along at the same time. It may not equal each other, but we really need to be fiscally conservative and, and look at a you know way to offset some of those costs. So Windsor High School, actually, it's it's this is the current state of Windsor High School. We added a 10-month assistant principal for last school year, and it was after the budget had already been set. So we shared with the public that we'd bring that through the budget process. In order to do that, Mr. Sunday at the high school had decreased one teaching position and decreased Windsor High School accounts to make that an even swap in terms of uh, finances. Um, in terms of Sage Park, we were um, looking at next year is, is the focus uh, support program, which is currently in two grade levels, there is some support for that third grade level, but we were looking to um, discontinue that program and really add into our um, MTSS system of providing academic supports to students in math and reading here at, at Sage Park. So we'd hire new staff members or, or move current staff members into those positions and be able to service more students who may be below grade level in math and reading. At the high school, as I, you know, we showed, there's an increasing number of students. There's also an increase in um, students that need special education services. We tried to work with that with um, tutors at the high school for some time. And so what we're looking at doing is decreasing some tutor funding, but adding a special education teacher to Windsor High School. Adding a board certified behavior analyst, that's a, a BCBA, is the name of the certification that those uh, um, staff members hold. And we had previously used a contracted service at um, pre-K to two level for that support, but we realized by just um, adding a little bit more money to that funding that we'd be able to have a staff member on our on our staff. We already have one uh, BCBA, we'd have two throughout the district. And that's working with students that may need behavior plans or some teachers that may need support for a student in their classroom um, to develop a plan for students, to develop services for students. So that's very important for us to to have. We also recognize that we have had just a tremendous increase in technology across the district. And so what we have been doing is utilizing a paraprofessional to do some of that work. Um, but then we have to contract with staff over the summer. And so we're looking at decreasing one paraeducator position and adding a technology technician that would work 12 months and work throughout the, throughout the district. But that person's main job would be at the high school. As you can imagine with 1,200 students with Chromebooks, there's a, a lot of responsibilities there, and so um, that's a that'd be a big part of that task. Also, through our work, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, at near the end, is our um, work on the profile of a graduate. But one of the things we see from not only community members, our students, our families, is that they would like to see us require personal finance as a graduation requirement for students. And so for um, the incoming freshman class, our plan is that personal finance would be a graduation requirement. It's a half year course. And so one business teacher, along with the current sections that we teach, would be able to ensure that all students receive that personal finance course. And so we thought that would be very important for our, our students as they go off to college or the workforce or military. They're bombarded with a lot of credit card offers and other um, you know, financial decisions that they need to make, even the decision on, on what college do I go to or you know, do I live at home for the first year or something like that? So all those, all those things we want to make sure we're, we're giving our students help with filing taxes, things like that. So I think that's really important. As well, um, as I mentioned, you know, we saw special ed increases. One of the increases we're seeing is uh, the need for a speech language pathologist. And so we service students, um, children who turn three. And so even if they're not in our schools, 
we have a responsibility of any student that lives in Windsor to provide speech services if they're identified to need speech services. So um, Aquanic and Oliver Ellsworth are very busy um, you know, with their speech pathology staff and really not um, able to if we keep seeing increases to meet those needs. So we're, we're looking to add a speech pathologist for next year. Next list is uh, program additions. So we've just gone through, Dr. Cook went through the staffing changes, and this has to do with additional programs. Uh, adding $50,000 for major maintenance. Uh, the goal has been trying to add $25,000 to $50,000 each year to increase that pot of money. I know Mr. Lockhart would like to have $100,000 for each of our buildings, but uh, we're clearly not at that point. But, you know, it's uh, easier if you're maintaining things and you wait to, to have, you know, a roof collapse at a school. I don't know where that would be. Uh, so uh, that survived. We had 50000 that was added for, for this coming year. Uh, and also part of that targeting Sage Park Science Labs was the one that's walked away. Um, elementary school summer program expansion of 30000 And even though that's an addition of 30000 it's still much less than prior summer school programs. We had a very successful first time ever program last year and had very good feedback from the teachers and administrators who were involved in that. How do we change it and upgrade it and expand it so we can reach more, more students? Uh, and also additional math tutors from K through 2 of 22,000. Again, an area we'd love to have been able to add some teachers in there, some specialists, but um, we think this will help at the K to 2 uh, level. So, um, net cost of program additions is $327,000, uh, which is a 0.47% budget increase. And again, new, there's not a lot of new spending in there, but it is very targeted. Turn this over. I'll take it. Okay. Fine, I'll take it. So um, I've, I've not been shy as a board president about investing in our school system. Um, when we went through the budget processes last year, it was um, a little give and take. What would the budget look like if we cut this amount? What would the budget look like if we added this amount? And it, it became a little tug and match here and there. So we saw fit this year, um, not to put the superintendent in a bad position, that give us a bucket list of things that if we had a magic wand and we can make it happen, what would you like to see on top of the budget that you're presenting? And these are some of the wish list item things that he presented. And quite frankly, almost every board member saw seven things on this list that they would love to have. But in order to stay within the budget that was presented, what were we going to cut? And at times it was like, you know, we were actually willing to maybe add something here and there. Um, but to um, with the, what's going on in the state of Harvard, excuse me, in the state of Connecticut at the Capitol, with a new governor, with the unknown about what the budget would look like, what would be approved at the budget. Uh, it, it, it would have been almost a little bit irresponsible for us at this point to add an additional on top of that, knowing that there were some unknowns out there. So, but these are some of the things that um, a data analyst, we've been wanting this data analyst for the past three, four years. That would be a person that would be working directly in the administrative office, running numbers, crunching numbers for the board. And anytime we make a request as a board of the superintendent, with he, he's pulling now resources away from other areas to solve, to solve a request for us. And there's another area of the school system that's kind of like lagging just a tad bit, just because we've made a special request. A data analyst would be a person that can, that can be pivoted off to that person, and they can provide whatever report that the superintendent would want. Um, social studies, um, we, I would love to have at least a full, maybe two social study teachers within the middle school because those are some of the most highly densely populated classes within the building. And you know what, we try to keep our classes, you know, around, you know, around about 14 to 18, 
you could easily have a social study class that could put, be pushing 25 to 30, just the way the block structure is here in the building. So um, those are some of the things that, if I had a wish list, great. We can always use more school counselors within the building. Um, the counselors have a huge workload within the building. Um, any, any, any support and help would definitely help take some of that burden off of them. So, you know, these are just basic examples of things that if we, if we had a wish list, this could definitely spread some of the burden out across the whole district and give the um, staff a little bit more support in the areas that they're doing. Don't get me wrong, they're doing a great job now. But, you know, we always could use a little help at times when the burden gets a little bit too heavy. So these are things that um, we're going to be looking at down the road to be building upon. Alliance Grant, as we, as um, Mr. Fury spoke, um, we, we're currently an alliance district within the state of Connecticut. Um, that's, the, that's, that's, we get, as one of the 33 school districts in the state, uh, we've been given mandates to turn our school districts around in the area of performance. I believe we are strongly there. Um, data is suggesting that we're not in the bottom tier, we're actually in the top tier now. Um, and, and, and we're growing. The, the, key, the key protection of the Alliance Grant is it keeps our, our level funding um, flat where we're not being cut by the state, even during the, the budget crisis that was happening over the past several years, our, our funding from the state remained flat. However, our ECS money has also remained flat and has not risen with the rest of the school districts around the state. If we ever lost our Alliance Grant funding, which is $582,729, these were the things that we would lose if we cut the Alliance Grant. The reading teachers, the math teachers, the family resource coordinator, Spark social worker, the ROTC has been a wonderful program at the high school. Um, it would now become a conversation amongst us. Um, your budget always speaks to your priorities as a town. Would the town be willing to now absorb another $580,000 if we lost that funding? That would be the fundamental conversation. And if they said no, these unfortunately would be the first things off the chopping block. And these are quite things that are now ingrained in what we do. And quite frankly, I, I would hate to see them lost, but to be lost. Next one. CIP, I, we've got to publicly thank um, Dr. Cook, the town manager, Mr. Peter Souza. Got to thank um, the, the town council. Um, everyone has worked together to improve um, with our CIP projects. Um, as you know, our buildings, um, they need to be well maintained. Um, we have great buildings, they're in great shape, but you got to maintain the physical plant on an annual basis. If you neglect to keep on, and, you know, fixing stuff and keeping up on stuff, over time they, they, they decay. And then if you have a major failure, then it's going to cost you down the road. These are the things that we've accomplished through um, the, new, the new cooling system at JFK and, uh, and OE. We're pushing very hard to get cooling here in this particular building. Um, at, at the middle school, um, it gets to be like an oven in these buildings during, um, during the summertime. Um, even if you leave the windows open all night long and come back in, it's still like, and we cannot only think about the safety of our children, we think about the safety of our staff because we're responsible for providing a conducive environment to learn and for those that come to work for us. So it's a safety issue. But this should, our, all of our buildings should be very comfortable and, and, and make sure that it's conducive for everyone. So we're working through it. We got pending with the Paquonic and Sage Park, like I said, cooling system. Um, we got paving and parking at Paquonic that is, is in dire need to be done. It's a safety issue. Uh, we're working with the town manager and the superintendent. They're working hand in hand to make this stuff happen. This is why I've been publicly vocal as a board member, no matter what seat I've sit sat in, that we should be at a minimum of funding $100,000 at each elementary school. $200,000 at Sage Park Middle School and a quarter million dollars every fiscal year at the high school. That's a lot of money, $850,000. I do understand that. However, if you continue to not fund and take care of your physical plan, how much is it going to cost you down the road when you have some type of failure? And then now you may have to go to a bonding or go to, now we have to rely on the town council to bail us out when we can fiscally and responsibly budget for this type of stuff down the road. That's a BHAG for me. I would love to see us back at that place. But um, it, again, your budget speaks to the values that you have within your town. Next slide. Go to Dr. Cook. I'll be right back to 
Leonard and uh, I did forget I was supposed to thank uh, Clover tonight. Clover Street moved their music concert to uh, seven o'clock, so we thank them for moving that back to allow us to to meet tonight. Um, I mentioned profile of the graduate East earlier. We do have what's called the thought exchange going on right now. It's an online tool where um, citizens, um, parents, family members, students even are able to give us feedback on what they feel that basically skills, competencies, abilities that they feel we should build in our students in Windsor Public Schools. It is um, somewhat tailored towards the towards high school, but when we look at it as a district, it's a project that we've been going on. This is now our second year in the project, and so we're now at the community outreach portion of that. We're looking at how we build our students pre-K through 12. And so if it's um, oral presentation skills, we're weaving that into all of our work throughout the um, time with us. So if you think of student-led conferences as something our district has really bought into and our families really enjoy, that's something that, that builds the oral competencies and presentation skills of, of students. I mentioned financial literacy as being something that's important to the board and myself and, and students in, in the high school. And that's something that we would not only address just at Windsor High School, we would address it here at Sage Park and, and throughout. So we've done a, a basically a year of study, now a year of planning of how we're going to get um, public input. We've worked with our teachers, we've worked with our Board of Education, we've worked with community business leaders, we've worked with community leaders. And so now the, the probably the most important part of this is to get input from our, our families. And, and so this is a great way to do that. It's very flexible. You can go online. If you're at a um, desktop, that's probably the easiest way to do it, is to log in and use that code. You can scan your QR code and do it through a mobile device if you'd prefer that. Um, it's all on our website too, so people watching at, at home or watching later can go right to the website and participate. It's going to ask you some information about what you feel is important and then give you a chance to rate other people's ideas and what they feel is important. And it may bring you back um, later on to join that that conversation. It's really an online conversation. We talked about different ways to accomplish this and we knew that you know, if we tried to just do community forums like something like this, we might only capture a, a smaller percentage of our of our families, but we know through this uh, this work we can capture a much greater percentage. And so um, we're very excited to, to do that work and get those results um, probably sometime in, in June and share those with the with the community and really have the community of Windsor establish what they believe is the profile of a graduate, graduate from Windsor students. So it's uh, it's very exciting work for, for us and we involve principals um, and central office staff members and then as I said we, we involved our teachers as well from pre-k to 12. It's really a district-wide project um, that we're, we're working on. And so as we wrap up, I'm going to ask uh, David and Leonard to share some closing thoughts. Well, uh, probably the most important thing is remember the date of the referendum. Budget referendum is uh, next Tuesday, May 14th, and polls are open, regular election kind of time, from 6, six in the morning till 8 at night. And uh, all seven polling spots are available. If people are going to be out of the area, they can vote by absentee ballot, but you have to actually go to the town hall, get the absentee ballot, and really kind of vote there. Um, again, very exciting um, budget. I thought, um, again, by our central office staff, which means not only the central office, but the principals as well, collaborating, um, knowing that uh, if they were going to have an ask, they might be told uh, well, what, what's kind of the lower hanging fruit that maybe you could do without. And I think that was very important to get a budget. As uh, alluded to, not knowing what the state of Connecticut's going to do had a couple of years of that, you know, it's, a, it's a, a difficult budget period of time for the state of Connecticut. So this is a very responsible budget. If you look at where we compare to other communities, um, uh, we're one of the lower increases. So I um, hope people look at that when making their decision uh, next Tuesday. Um, I just want to again thank Dr. Cook and his administration. I want to thank the principals that are here in attendance. Um, they were part of the, the process. Um, there was four public, there was four public um, committee meetings. Um, the teachers attended the first one and they defended their, their budget line item by line item to the board. So there was collaboration there. 
Um, I definitely want to thank Ms. Taylor for being here. She's a fellow board member, and all the board members um, recognize them in their absence. I um, want to thank also the town council and the, and the town manager. Um, they, they, we presented to the, present the budget to them for over two hours, um, to the point they didn't want to, they didn't have us to come back. They didn't have any questions. Um, so we're thankful that. I um, want to remind everybody it was a very civil, collaborative process throughout. Um, we definitely had disagreements in um, perceptions, uh, policy, and politics at time. But at the end of the day, um, a good contract is when no one wins and gets everything that they want. And this is something that um, the superintendent's budget, we adopted it. The town also adopted it. Everybody voted 9-0, um, both at the Board of Ed level as well as the town council level. And um, we're encouraging parents to go out and to be supportive of the budget. Doesn't matter if you have a child in the school district or not, um, please go out and vote. We want to hear from each and everybody. At, that, at this time, we will open up to any Q&A, questions, comments, concerns. Any questions, comments, concerns in regards to the budget? I'll ask one more time. <laughs> Just so that all hearts and minds are clear. Any questions, comments, or concerns in regards to the budget? Can we do that as good of a job explaining? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if that's, a, if that's the case, thank you very much for engaging the Board of Education and trusting us with um, the, the macro process of educating your children. And please encourage everyone to go out and vote on May 14th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.